www.rctv.org. And the first item on the agenda is Camp Rice Moody. Conservation restriction update, um, Brad Latham is here. Is that okay? Thank you. You say my name is Brad Latham. I'm here on behalf of the property owner of Camp Rice Moody. Also with me are representatives from the Girl Scouts. Uh, as you know, we've, this is the third time we've been before you. I think we've been before the selectmen a couple of times. Uh, and also we've had ongoing communication with the state uh, regarding a conservation restriction. <clears throat> uh, we're at the point now where the state has said to us, go back for the final time, hopefully to the commission, uh, get them to say that they're satisfied with the CRs that now exist, and then they, the state will then send it to the illegal, and it's then ready for signing. Basically, as you may recall, the objective of the conservation restriction is to divide Camp Rice Moody into two areas uh, for two different restrictions. One is for wetland preservation, which is around the border, and the main section in the middle is for a restriction for recreation. The ultimate objective, of course, is to not have this property ever be built upon for development of housing or commercial use. So that's the overriding objective. Recognizing and doing that, that the Girl Scouts need to have some level of flexibility to continue with their operation and to modify their operation as circumstances may dictate. And that may include opening up some areas or changing areas. Um, and we have presented uh, a baseline report to Chuck, uh, which I think is a pretty well detailed plan from what I've seen on the baseline reports, just to show what's there now so there's a, a measure of what's, what's changed in the future that ever occurs. So that's the major thrust, and I hope is that you'll find the conservation restriction satisfactory so I can go back to the state and ask them to review it uh, their final time for signing. That when we initially, um, you, you initially presented this, um, I think we had some changes that we asked uh, about for, for the wetlands restriction. Yes, and I think that actually after that, Chuck went out and did a site visit uh, with a uh, wetland scientist and, and came up with a line that was got some variation. One line, line moved very slightly because there's a pool up there. Mm -hmm. We had to recognize that pool and it's open. But this plan should be the plan that uh, addresses that. I've not asked the uh, land surveyor to sign the plan yet. They want to make sure that uh, we're all set to go. And I'll ask them to sign it when we get the package back to the state. Do you recall this, Anika? Um, I do. I do recall. Um, and I think, if my memory's right, I think previously, the wetland conservation area was, it looked sort of like the same thin strip, but just all the way around. Correct. And so it looks like this area on the northwest side of the property is where there's a little bit more, so it stays out of the 35, except around the existing pool. Um, and so, So I guess one question I had was, so that's the conservation restriction. Um, can you talk a little bit about how that 35 foot setback um, has looked around the pool? Can you sort of describe that area that is not included in the conservation restriction, but within the 35 near the pool? Well, of course, we're not asking that you waive anything on your 35 uh, right. and your 25 and, and 35 right. limit. So those still are there. Uh, I think your recollection is correct that the northerly wetland restriction area expanded as a consequence. Uh, of course, the existing condition around the pool is just that. There's no intention to go into the 35-foot area. Uh, we, we rely upon the bylaw and your standards when that time comes. If the, if the Girl Scouts ever want to do anything, they have to still go through the process and either ask for a waiver or meet the requirement. So we're not trying to avoid that, that restriction itself. 
But I say uh, on the upland portion, uh, it is important in the restriction that we're able to uh, have flexibility. There. So can you sort of describe, and I'm, I'm sure it's, I know I've reviewed it in the past, but just please refresh me on the, the restricted uses permitted in the recreation restriction area. Yes. Just a just a brief, or tell me where it is in the text, and I'll reread it because I did look at it. Before. Sure, I can set this here. I'll refer to the paragraph. Sure. They have general restrictions, you know, in the normal uh, protocol. Yeah. Uh, and then on uh, paragraph B, which uh, let's see, page about four pages in. It says reserved rights and exceptions. And that's broken into two parts. And the, the next page after that says use as a recreational facility. That's okay. underlined. Okay, yep, yep, yep. So okay. that is the area that talks about what the Girl Scouts can do. And it talks about maintaining the existing facility, uh, and they identify that there's a residence there, uh, recreation improvements are allowed, some, and there can be expansion uh, of those. Uh, handicap accessibility rights um, and camp related activities. And those are described in paragraph E near the end of, of B. And then they, they have, the state is approved and said they have no problem with fundraising. They have certain fundraising, they have Girl Scout meetings and not necessarily directly camp activities. Um, and then public recreation use, if you recall, there was a possibility of, of that if the Girl Scouts do not use this for a period of time, the ownership may go to the town and the town may then want to use this. So there's a clause they deal with the town's right if they do become the owner, which we don't think will really ever happen, but it's like a safety net. Yeah. Okay. Any questions from the commission? I just had a minor question. If, if at some point in time in the future the, the pool would be uh, raised, would that be then automatically included in the conservation restriction? No. It's, okay. a, it's a restriction, but it's a recreation restriction. Okay. Comments from the audience, community? So, Chuck. Yeah, so I, I, I just wanted to ask a follow up question to Anika's question about the pool. That line that creates the conservation restriction, is that the at the tree row or the edge of forest or, you know, so what's in front of this line here is lawn? Mm -hmm. And what's in back of it is just the forested area. Is that, right. that's how it is? Yes. All right. That, so. that should be the line that you and uh, John went through. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to make it clear that it's, yeah. it's now being used as that side of the pool as lawn. It's, they're not taking additional amount. Yeah. And the pool is probably always going to be there if this is going to be some sort of camp or day camp. Yeah something that people like to do is to have a pool and to go to the pool, a big draw. So, um, yeah, I, I, walked, I walked this uh, with uh, John, what's last name? Mm -hmm. Tilton, yeah, John Tilton. And uh, it, it, it's, it's surprising. It's a very, um, un, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not developed at all. It's a really nice place. And, um, but there's a lot of upland, so you know I think I think Brad's done a great job. I, I didn't get a chance to review this um, when it when it came in, so I'm hoping the commission will review it between now and the next meeting, if that's all right. I, I wonder if it's possible if they could vote to approve it, subject to your being satisfied. Just the timing wise, we, this has taken two years, and not, not due to your fault, but just through the process. And I'd love to be able to, if Chuck is satisfied, and you are, to then go back to the state and get them to move. Pretty fully reviewed. I, 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 don't, I don't have a major objection to that. Um, it, would be, it would be good to be kept in the loop in terms of 
vinyl is substantially different from this. So the, the state responded, right? So in those comments, I mean, the, the state responded. Well, that right. was the review. Yeah, the, the state, the state right, had satisfied that email. Accept legal review, and then of course we have to come back to you to sign it. Right. Right. So right. this isn't the so end of it. This is just enough that you have step. approved it. In I can take it back to the state. Okay. And I also noticed that there's a signing signing page for the select board too. That's correct. Now, are they before or after us? <laughs> they probably want to be last. Yeah, and um, so my name is Lorraine Horn, and I am at 99 Beaver Road, writing in the resident, and also I've been um, involved with Girl Scouts of Eastern Mass as a patron to the camp. But just a quick question, I, I, I couldn't hear you what you said about the town. You said something about it going back to the town, <coughs> there was oh, a it, period of time, is that in? If in fact the camp is no longer used by the Girl Scouts. How many years did you say? Two, you say? two, two suggestions. Oh, I didn't hear that, okay. I didn't say I could really do it. So okay. I didn't say okay. It, it goes back to town automatically? It does, but it's subject to the restriction. That's why the restriction is there to preserve it. to be, it's in the recreation area. It's not really I know, subject I know. It's I know. not okay. really what's, what we're talking about, the conservation restriction. So it's in the recreation area, so it doesn't really just, have to be in the map. I'm not saying it does, I'm just, I think I'm just trying to. A, I think they're using an icon to represent it. Uh, I'm, I'm looking to see if I can. But I think, but I think in the recreation area, you know, especially in the 100 foot buffer zone, you know, one of my concerns from a conservation standpoint <coughs> is the cutting of trees. <coughs> and so I think from that standpoint, Dave, it would be helpful to see where there is already a structure, and I think it is close to that 100-foot zone. But any time they cut any trees here, they'd have to come before us anyway for permission. So it's really a moot point. I understand. Um, So we're not, you're, we're not here to sign this tonight. No, no, I'm simply asking you to vote that it is acceptable in the condition like go back to the state and represent that to them. And that's the subject to Chuck. Did everybody review it? I don't have any questions about this. I would like Chuck to take another path through me because he's got an eye for these things. So. If, as long as it's okay with, with him on that final pass. Well, that's not on what I'm hearing from him. He needs to review it. I'm, well, I'm, Brad said I could, yeah, Brad's, I'm Brad's saying, saying I'm uh, willing to accept it subject to his review. Time frame on that, Brad, because it would be two weeks. It would be the 25th for our next meeting, but you, you want to speed that up, so. But I do just because it's going on so long. Well, what's the deadline? Is it the next Wednesday or is it tomorrow? But, but it'd be your time to review it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, how long would it take you to do it? Are you asking me? Or? I, I'm asking you what, how fast you want this process to happen. Do you want me to look at it tomorrow? Is that necessary? If, if, is it, can it be Monday or Tuesday or next Wednesday? Next Tuesday or Wednesday, that would be appreciated. Okay. That's fine. And then I had a question about we're at the point where it's been looked at and we're reviewing final draft after the states made the comments. So there's really not too much left. That's to, correct. To, to look, yeah, that's right. That's right. So do I hear a motion? Make a motion to accept pending Chuck's approval. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next item on the agenda is a request for determination of the applicability 2019-12-161 Belmont Street, Map 28, Lot 89, Burkhardt. Good evening. Hi. My name is Eric Burkhardt, uh, 161 Belmont Street. I uh, so the request for the commission to reconstruct, uh, tear down, and, and build a slightly larger deck on the back of the house, which is what's there now, and then extending off of that uh, a paved patio into the existing wall. So, I'm not sure how you'd like me to proceed. I'm happy to walk through the details of the proposal. I'm not sure if you've seen it to what extent. Or any um, Chuck and I had a site visit uh, yesterday morning. Um, I, also, I also went out there today. And I saw the proposed extension and paver patio fire pit seating area on this plan. Then I had a hard time following some of it. Um, take a look at the wetlands that have been delineated by Bill Manuel and his description of the um, location where the wetlands flags were um, based on um, distances off of uh, structures, but it seemed fairly accurate. Um, but I had a hard time with the plan that shows 160, the backyard site of proposed work. Yep. Yeah. Did anybody else get a chance to look at it? So, I have a question about the, the wetland. Is, like is this an isolated wetland? No. No. It's in the back of the house? Yeah. One of the things that I, the only thing that I saw when I looked at the, the drawings here, and, and when I looked at the narrative, and when I also looked at the drawings, the, the distances from the wetlands to the, any of the, the, the structures and any of the improvements that you build, and um, certainly with, uh, within. They're outside the the, uh, the the distances that we require. The only thing that, that isn't in here, which we usually see, is a is a is a plan view that shows um, the structures, and it shows the wetland line, and it shows a 25 and a 35 foot off of that wetland line, and then it also shows what you're planning to build, and then the distances from what you're planning to build to that wetland line. So that's the only thing that I see that in your plans that's really missing. That's what I attempted on, um, and I'm happy to elucidate on it, but the, 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 the page mentioned by the chair, 161 Belmont Backyard Site Proposed Work, where I plotted you know, with the letters A, B, C, D, E. Right. And that's the, the border of the, uh, you know, approximate, but um, right. that's the border of the proposed deck. And then the, the distance from point A to point H is the, the nearest wetland that way. I did what I didn't include here, but I did measure before I came tonight was the distance from E, I'm sorry, D to the um, property line to the west, and that's right. about 40 feet. And yeah. the wetland is further than that. Right. Yeah. But I, you're right, I didn't ex explicitly note the the, um, the required distance, and so you could see that it was beyond that. The nearest to the wetland from the structure of the deck is, is point uh, A to point J. Right. Point H. Can you explain the, the pavers? Yeah. It's going to be F, <laughs> F and G or the outer corner? Exactly. Yeah. I, I wasn't sure how to. So it's roughly you know, these. And I, 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 it's rounded here, right? But I assumed you know, just from here to here. I have to agree with Dave. Um, I found this plan pretty confusing, and I was wondering why we didn't have a plan. So I would request a plan. And I think, Chuck, we have some examples of those that you could provide Mr. Burkhart with. Uh, yeah. 
No, there's definitely some examples we have. I could I could provide something. Um, this. Well, I I don't know how what else you're trying to get out of me. Um, oh, no, so yeah, we certainly could. You know, do this. Um, I I I think hearing one of the numbers. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I felt like the building department would ask for a survey plan anyways, but now that I heard that number of 40 feet, and it's a 15-foot setback, I'm not sure if they're going to ask for one. And we don't usually ask for a survey plan for an RDA. That's what the notice of intents use. But, but a better quality um, sketch would be, you know, appropriate to ask for. And, and that might be something the builder could do or something like that. Um, I'm not sure. I, I, I think time is of the essence on this project. I'm getting that sense when I've talked to Eric before. Uh, it is, and you know, I'm happy to comply with whatever the commission asked for, but um, I guess I'm curious as to um, what that would illustrate for you that, yeah, admittedly, I did my best work here. You know, it's, it's a little crude, but the distances are accurate. You know. The distance are fine, but, but the actual structure, um, the A. Yeah. Is that the pavers going out? No, no. sorry. I mean, I'm happy yeah. to, if, if you would, Chuck, if you wouldn't mind going back up to the, what I tried to do here was, was note um, A, B, C, D, E is the, the, um, um, edges A, B, C, D, E. I just tried to do the outline of the deck, the, the points. And what's the so F is the paver, and then F and G are out here. So, so just to just to ask, so F and G sort of um, include additional space outside of that arc. Yeah, they did, just because you know this design here is rounded. I'm not sure if we're round, so it, it, it came out to about. I just I just squared it off right. to plot it here. Is, um, is there going to be any filling for the existing yard to do any of this work? To do the um, paving, to level the I mean, paver area? I really haven't. It's usually excavation where they for the pavers, set a base. And they might have to level that a little, a little bit. bit. Um, it's kind of curvy back there, but the, the work we're looking to do this fall, if we can get it, you know, get this, get it done, is the depth, and we'll probably come back maybe next year with the papers. Yeah, I think, I think for me, when it comes to the site plan, I think this could go either way. I mean, sometimes we've asked for site plans, sometimes so we it haven't. Like. So, uh, I mean, it's right, it's right, kind of in between. Um, yeah. It's kind uh, of a judgment call. Other than what I looked at it, I. When I looked at the plans, the plans, to be honest with you, when I looked at no, it, I, I seemed very straightforward to me. I understood actually what your ABCT he was looking at the the two plans. Um, it's just not something that we usually see as a plan, and being that the closest. To the, the structure is 43 feet from A to J to the wetland flag. That's within eight feet of a 35 foot node structure zone, which is um, which is pretty close. But it certainly meets the criteria of the 35 foot. Um, Do we want the pavers outside the 35 foot? The pav pavers are. They are. They are outside. And I'm talking about the deck, the corner of the deck. No. And no, J. Oh, I'm sorry. J, no, it's 28.5 feet from J. Right. So from J to G, that's the that's the, the pavers. Pavers, right. But to the A, A to J is 43 feet. That's to the deck. That, that was the only thing I see. I mean, I I can envision it from the plan. I, I just, right. it's inside the 35 foot. We generally want those pavers outside of it, right? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Generally, yeah, but, generally, but it's not, you know, depending on how a pave, paver deck is installed, it may or may not substantially, you know, in, intrude on 
in certain root zones. But I, I did want to ask about, I mean, you know, the, the design of the deck is a slightly different shape than what's presented on A through E. So I guess I'm wondering if A through E is an, another inclusive space that just sort of includes this open space right here. No, that wasn't my intention. Then I guess, the oh, so yeah. where's the existing? So, again, A cone is right here. Mm -hmm. This is, um, yeah, facing south, A. And then if you follow over on, on the page you're looking at, straight over to B, it juts out a little bit to C. Okay. To D. Two different levels yeah. of the deck. No, I, I, get, I get that. I guess I, was, I wasn't entirely sure on this plan yep. where the where this structure was located. That's, that's the, the back of the house. Right, so that's this. Exactly. You're yes. saying? Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. And uh, Mr. Manuel was uh, asked to, to mention Bill, something as well. Go ahead. Yeah, um, I flagged the wetlands here, and uh, I just want to point out to everyone that the, the backyard is dead flat. Uh, with respect to the plan, I think. Rebecca, you did what I was about to suggest, if they could connect the dots. <laughs> and, and that would make the plan a little more clear about you know where the, the pavers are going to go and maybe some handwork on there that points out that these are the paver area, this is a deck. And I, I'm not sure if the commission is aware that you're, you're, you're removing your existing deck, right? That's right. Yeah. And you're actually rebuilding the from the house out to A to B, back to the house, that's basically a rebuild of the existing deck. Is that what that light colored thing this off I the back believe, is? This, uh, denotes the existing deck. A and B are four feet beyond the existing deck right now. So, so all of this work occurs within maintained lawn area. And with respect to the 28 and a half feet to the, this wetland flag here, uh, there is no vegetation in between there. Uh, it's all just maintained lawn. So it's, it's, um, it would require a minimal removal of the topsoil. And you're right, Anika, that there, there is a sort of a, some preparation to go with patio pavers. But there's no vegetation out to the wetland boundary. Chuck, did we see any uh, evidence of things out in the wetland? Is this the one? No, I, I don't think so. Okay. I'm not. I'm not sure. I didn't make a note of it. Um, this is the one with the um, pyramid yeah. wood piles. Yes. Yeah, grafted. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Look like cuts. Pyramid wood piles. <laughs> it's in one of the pictures, actually. <laughs> Sorry, I, I stack I stack my firewood in the region of the house. Did I? Oh, gotcha. Cool. When we walked there, was that shed right adjacent to the wetland, or was it off? No, it's pretty it close. like in back of it. We didn't walk in back of it, but it seemed like it was right, right. But when top. I look at this and you, and you connect K to L. It's a long ways away from the well. And those 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 pyramid wood piles were very close to the wetland as well, weren't they? Yeah, they're right next to they're like where it says thirty-five, nine, three, two. They're, they're right in front of it. Well one of the flags anyway. This one was here. So I don't know what the I don't know what the structure is then. That twenty dash eighty nine. I think that's the shed. I think. Yeah. The, shed J, the, the J flag was the closest flag. I won't say the rest are immaterial, but J was the closest flag. It, it's, it's a, a unique fact because you, you don't think uh, the building department would, would want a plan, would need a plan for their. Well, I can this. tell you they're not going to accept that plan. Yeah, I, I, that plan's not. I, I showed this plan to Mark, uh, and 
he's the building commissioner, and he said, no, they, they would be asking for a better plan. I don't know if they would need a survey plan. Yeah. But do we need a survey plan? I mean... I don't know that I want a survey plan as much as I would want just to make, make sure we have a better plan. And, and I think if it's meeting the building department's needs, I think it's going to meet... I, I feel like it's going to meet... It's going to be a separate thing. I don't know what their regulated rules and regulations... I think if he was really close to the side yard, it's like 18 feet or something like that, they would probably ask for a survey. Yeah. But being 40 feet away, I have to give the benefit of the doubt on that. So for us, if we just a better sketch, it right. would seem to be good. Um, what about an aerial? Haven't we used aerials with with that? We have, and we've used yeah, these before too, you, but it's you, just never um, been done with dots. It's right. it's someone's drawn out. You paste it. What, what we're off. talking about, and then we could measure at each point. Wouldn't you be able to do that with an aerial a little bit better than I think this? Because it seems to be off. Well, the thing is, one of the things that would be helpful is is if there was a it was a definitive link between like something that was there's just a dot at the point A there that that point is just in the middle of of it's an extension of the house. But one of the questions I think that we need to figure out is this is an RDA. Do we need a better plan to actually determine whether we need a we say yes, it's a positive determination or a negative determination. In my view. I don't need a better plan from what I saw and what I see here for to make a determination of applicability. I don't. But I'm sure looking at this, just being knowledgeable about what they require for building permits, I don't think you're going to have this as a, as a, a drawing that the building department is going to accept. I understand so. that. I'm happy to, to put that together for the building department. So um. I think that's what's before us now is do we need a better plan to make a determination of applicability? Well, so uh, my, you know, with RDAs, I think we've accepted things similar to this before. Uh, my, my only question would be, is really the J point and the how comfortable we feel associated with the accuracy of that J point, because right now it's 28 and a half feet to the corner of the pavers. If you, if you looked at where the wetland, I looked right at where that wetland flag was and looked at where the deck as it existed is, it's not even close. But you mean the line is relatively close? Drawing a line between J and, and even if you extended the deck, it's not even close. Eric and I measured that offset to the J flag. We, we actually laid out the patio and the grass and then measured the offset. Okay. So it's, I mean, it, to me it looks like, you know, to the, to the, from J to, to the corner of the existing deck looks to me to be at least 50 feet. And you're only extending the deck, what, four feet further out? Four feet. And from the house? So, so it's... So from my perspective, then I, then I would agree with you. The only thing, and, and generally this, there's some language in there, even in an RDA, Chuck, right, that they still have to call you before they, that erosion controls are set up before they do anything with an RDA? or. or What's the process with communicating with you? Because I guess my one level of protection would be before this happens, let's... What about your level of review once it's done? That's why we're talking about a plan. But before they started, they have to call you and, and you have to have a, a site inspection anyway, but... I, I still have... So you're, you're, you don't have so anything here. I mean, are you approving this conceptual plan? At the dimensions that are in the, so the, the deck's going to be 15, 10 by 23, and then the smaller decks is 11 by 13, 6, and the patio is 14 by, 14, 10 by 13. But that doesn't account for that arc. No. Um, but, I mean, if you, if you approve this plan with those dimensions, that's what we're reviewing against, right? I mean, we've got two the, This is the best plan, I mean. Yeah, right. so, so I think we've got a plan that shows exactly what's supposed to be built. I think we've got a sketch that shows 
you know, based on field measurements, right. how far it actually is from the flags, whether this is a sketch or an accurate sketch or not. I mean, those are our field measurements mm -hmm. that we have on record. I, I think those are field measurements, but I, I have some issues with this plan because did this move? This is this shed that far back from the wetland line? The shed might not be in the wrong spot based on... Is that the shed? Is that something else? That's the shed That's that the was shed. there when we moved in. You can see it it's never moved. Isn't the, the shed flag might be in a relative different spot, but the offset to the J flag is correct. We measured that in the field. So in other words, this J flag here may be a little bit closer, is my recollection, but it was 28 and a half feet. I think I would agree with you, but I, I recollect that line went right along the back of that shed, and the um, those. So in other words, straight from J to L. Yeah, but you got K going up. There may be a flag missing here, but it did jump out right after. Yeah. It jump out and yep. loop right around. It went out and yep, came back in. That's a that's a similar scale jump, so it's like a 25 to 30 foot even if distance you drew, between Even J if you drew a straight line from J to L, mm -hmm. it's not changing anything associated with this project. Like the, the it doesn't change the setbacks. Oh. Correct. Right. Right, but part of the review is some sort of statement about not the resource RDA. area, where it is and where it isn't. Not with, not with an RDA. We've disagreed with where the resource area is on RDA before. And that is part of the review. <laughs> so, um, I think I could go, so I guess one of, one question I have, and I'm sorry I didn't make the site visit, um, but, so what's, for people who went to the site visit, um, or from the applicant, what, what is the elevation change between the backyard and the wetland, roughly, is it, okay, because that's what it looks like here. No. It, it is, a, there's, there's no change, not much change. Okay. It's like a, it's like a, an abrupt 8 to 12 inch drop off. So historically, land was pushed out, and basically the backyard is the wetland. At least in, in this part of the project over here. Well, I guess the, the lawned area between the, the, the concrete um, area underneath the, the deck and the extent of the lawn, there's the well, you can see the topography. There's a little swale there, yeah. but the topography distance between that concrete slab and the back of the lawn is, is nil. It's, it's pretty flat. Okay. Yeah. And do you get a good amount of flooding in the backyard? Never have had flooding. No flooding? And in the eight years we've been there. Actually, there's a on this this one here that shows the wood pile. You can actually see the the uh, wetland flag, that J flag, is right there on, on this this page here. There's a like the yeah. the hut. You see the to the right. There's a wood pile, and yeah, to the I right see of that that's yeah. the that's the J flag. Oh, I have a question <coughs> on the wetland flags. Mm -hmm. um, how did they come about on this plan? How were they uh, delineated on this plan? Which? All of them. How, they how did you actually put them on the plan? I took my best guess. Just I think it was all wetlands, and, and I knew the distance. Um, and I, you know, just Is the distance from the back of your house to this correct? 
to your good. shed? Is that correct? I didn't note that distance on there. Okay, th this is where I'm having a problem. I'm, I, because when we were out there, the wetland line is pretty much right in back of the shed. Now, is the shed in the wrong place or, or is not? the wetland line in the wrong or is place? It, or is the wetland line in the wrong place? No, but, but Bill measured the wetland line out there to where the where the A stake is, and the closest point is 28 feet. So I, I think that, and did you measure any of Did you measure the 46 too? Uh, yes, we went over. So, and the other ones must be further away, it seems like, uh, so they didn't measure those. I think that's, to me, that's the point, right, is, is that these, all these points that are laid out are relative to each other from a distance. I'm, I'm, I, I don't disagree that the, the sheds, but just like we say with the wetland, the, the shed has no true accuracy in this plan. Just like the house, but as long as the points are relative to each other, that's yeah. what, that's that's what I'm going off. And that's what I tried to achieve here. I would be happy with uh, just if you guys ask for a better sketch, and if the building department uh, requires a, a, a site plan, a plot plan, that we get a copy of that. And um, I, I think with the demand, it, it sounds like so what he wrote down. And I actually never saw, uh, because it's so tiny, but now that I blew it up, that those same dimensions that I wrote down in, in the order are also on this plan here. I mean, I think this is the plan of record. Yeah, I think ultimately, like, these two, I, what I look to on this one is, is less about overall and space where it is, but the, the distance from the line, and, and that these lines were essentially plotted out. But, but you're right, Sean. This is what I, when, when we, when we sit back and say, did he do what he said he was going to do? I mean, this is what I'm looking at. Yeah, I think he's going to, I, I, so this is not the first uh, time that uh, Mr. Burkhardt's come in. Yep. So when he's, he's kind of always been, you know, get the tape work out of the way first and doing exactly what's, what's needed. So I'm not concerned about that. My only question was, Better, better sketch, and then someone asked the question about grading because to me it was it was kind of up and down. You're gonna have to straighten that out somehow to, and then what was gonna happen to the rest? But it sounds like you'll just straighten out where the patio is going, and then anything beyond that is gonna be left alone. So it's. <clears throat> Do these incredibly detailed firewood storage have to come out of the wetland? They're not in the wetland. They're not in it? Not in the wetland. Apparently. Yeah, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, the, the firewood it's stacking is, is at A+. Plus. Well, I mean, Becky, I, if, if we have a big issue with this and we want a plan, I, I'm not like... I think we're asking for a better plan, a better sketch. I, I don't have a problem with asking for a better, better sketch or better plan, which I think the building department is going to do anyway. My question is, do we need that to actually vote that this is a negative determination of applicability? That's that's my question. Yeah, and I don't. I don't. At this point, I'm satisfied with what I saw in the field and what I see between these two plans here. And I understand if I understand your suspect, Becky, when you look at these plans, because it's it's not it's not the same as looking at like this plan here, which shows the hundred foot, the twenty five, and the thirty five foot line, and the structures as they exist, and also as they're going to be built. Granted, but we always want to know where the wetland line is and it's not quite the rest of it yeah I get I get that it's 28 and a half feet but where it is and the rest of the that property is not quite correct but that's okay if that's what the rest of the Commission wants that's fine well, I think if, you know if if you agree with uh, Mr. Manuel that J is the closest, J and H are the closest wetland flags, and, and that those distances are correct, then, you know, then that's what it is. So you could just make a condition saying that the deck needs to be 46 feet away from whatever that is, H. Flag H. Yep. And the patio needs to be 28 feet at its closest point away from J. I mean, you could do that. 
Yeah, we could add those in. Okay, do I hear a motion? Um, I move we issue a uh, negative determination. Second. Second. Well, don't do that yet. With the condition that we're going to get a sketch, right. a better sketch, or we're going to get um, a site plan. We're going to get the site plan. If the site plan is required from the building that it's for. And then that um, the side of the deck is no closer than 46, and the, the top part of the patio area is no closer than 28.5. I'll second as amended. Great. Vote. All those in favor? Eric, Bill, can certainly you have probably have 20 of these in your truck that you can show them as plans. They show a plan view of the, of the site, the wetland line. We want Google Earth base. Yeah. Thanks, Penny, for the time. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have a notice of intent, 59 Forest Street, map 39, lot 75, 117, Giuseppe, um, and this is a public uh, hearing for, we don't have a DEP do. number, right, Bill? Oh, we just got it. Woo. It's now being opened and conducted currently under the authority of Mass Wetlands Protection Act, Mass General Laws, yes. Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Reading General Bylaws, Section 7.1, and the hearing is conducted in the following manner. Applicant presents a proposal. Commission receives reports. Commission will address questions and comments to the applicant and the public will give the opportunity to ask questions. An attendance sheet is in the back room, and all those who wish to speak should sign that. And at this time, I'd like to introduce members of the commission starting on the right. David Pinnett. Anika Scanlon. Rebecca Long, the chair. Michael Flynn, vice chair. Chuck. Oh, Chuck Taroni, conservation administrator. Okay. File number is 270-724. And just got that at 357 this afternoon. Uh, Heidi at Northeast Regional Office says it was in the system, but for some reason the online viewer has not been repopulating. So I've certainly noticed that with several of my projects that they, they don't even seem to be locked in. Mm -hmm. But uh, that is the file number. I forwarded that email to Chuck. So, um, can we pop open the site plan first and, and I'll just walk the commission through what the project is. And then I was uh, alerted that uh, one small area of driveway is gonna request a variance and that's what I passed out to you. So, um, actually, can you rotate that counterclockwise? Tell me when. One, one more. more. Yeah, okay. All right. So, here's the existing house. And there's a long driveway. This, this parcel was cut out of uh, an original parcel over here, and there's quite a bit of open space associated with it. All of this land over here is, is sort of shared open space. And this is the lot proper right here. Uh, Forest Street is way over here. And the driveway comes in, um, leads to the existing garage. The outline is right here. This is the existing garage. Uh, the commission has already issued a, a minor project permit to do uh, carpentry work on the house, including removing these larger decks in the back and replacing them with smaller decks. Uh, the house has been recited, some roof lines have been changed, but all that's been carpentry work. And they've been holding off until we get an order of conditions to do this demo and rebuild this wing of the garage and they'll have living space over it. So I flagged the wetlands back in May and uh, basically they start, their, their virtually all of it are, is off property in the open space, but they, they wind their way uh, across. This is basically mowed grass in this area. It's, it's grass essentially up to the wetland line. Uh, flags are just inside the, the woods line. 
it meanders off property in this direction and then it goes straight away from the the, uh, the lot line and up on that part of the property. So the project isn't very big. Now that all that carpentry work is done, all we need to do is demo this garage, we'll stage a dumpster right here in the paved driveway. And uh, once that's done, we need to dig some footings. Uh, it'll be, you know, the, it, the garage will have a slab, so all we need is frost wall footings at this point. And uh, then uh, build to this new outline here. The 25 foot zone of natural vegetation runs right through here and the 35 no structure zone runs right through here. So the addition, the, the demo and rebuild is all outside the no structure zone. You see there's an extension of the existing driveway. The existing driveway is darker color here. The extension goes right here. It's about 11 feet wide and that will bring you to the second bay of the new garage. And I was alerted at the site walk yesterday that this little portion of driveway here that goes into the no structure zone would require a variance. That's 56 square feet. So that's what I passed out to you is my request for a variance. Uh, in support of the variance, we uh, offered up some mitigation. We sort of debated what would be the best approach while we were at the site. But we have an area basically starting at flag A6 uh, and then extending to roughly A8, somewhere between A7 and A8. That is a, uh, an invasion of knotweed. It's a sort of a patch that extends out in this direction. And we, we decided the best and the easiest thing to do would be to strike a line between A6 and A8, and that creates a, an area of about 200 and, what did I say, 206 square feet? 205 square feet of area as uh, compensation. We would remove the knotweed in support of our variance request. And the way we'd like to do that is we're going to have an excavator on site. Everybody knows knotweed is a very tenacious plant. Uh, we had some pretty good success at 364 Lowell Street doing a whole plant removal. We were able to dig out the entire root mass and what was left, what did re-sprout, was, was minor uh, sprouts and basically turned over earth that we were, they were easily dug out. So with the excavator that's going to be on site to do this uh, foundation work, we're going to use that and just dig out the knotweed that's in that area. Uh, now, with respect to the remaining stuff, of course the question is, well, what about the remaining knotweed that's, uh, you know, kind of in the wetland area? And Lori volunteered to tenaciously battle the remaining part of that wetland by doing a cut and dab methodology. Uh, we talked about you know, how that's done, lop the plant off about six inches above and spray the herbicide directly down into the stem. And by that methodology, you get very exact treatment of your target weed. And uh, she thinks she's gonna really love that. So uh, besides the 205 square feet, we hope that in two to three years, we see really a total eradication of this, this little patch of, of knotweed here. So we, the 205 we're offering up as, yep, we're gonna take care of that knotweed. The rest of it is sort of a, a bonus, but uh, we think between that and I didn't talk about yet the infiltration, we're picking up some uh, roof runoff this whole project has a net gain of about 585 square feet of new impervious area. And so we have two sections where we're going to pick up roof runoff and direct that to underground infiltration chambers, to Coltec chambers. So between the infiltration, the new infiltration where now there is none, and the uh, over and above amount of mitigation for the, the small incursion here. We think that's uh, some pretty good justification and support for the commission granting the waiver and we re respectfully ask for that. 
We have uh, we show erosion control. Uh, there's a shed back here. We're just going to really contain the work zone by putting a mulch sock right through here, right along the driveway. So it's going to uh, pick up where the um, existing driveway is and then wrap that right around so that it will contain all the excavation work. Again, this is all we need is our uh, frost walls and footings because it's a garage slab and um, so the, the excavation is not going to be very deep at all. I think anything that comes out that can't be used as backfill is going to have to be taken off site. So uh, I think it's a fairly straightforward project. The site was very neat. There's been work going on all spring, and we saw the site was very neat and well kept. So uh, I think you can expect that going forward, and we hope the commission sees it the way we see it. Could you um, um, talk a little bit about your proposed mitigation sketch? One thing you didn't mention uh, is your planting plan. Yes, you're absolutely correct. <laughs> Um, I did include a planting plan with uh, my request for variance. Okay. And uh, we're not only going to take out the knotweed that's there, but then we're also going to add in some uh, native shrubs in that area. It's not a huge area, it's not very wide, but I am suggesting that six three to four foot tall sweet pepper bush would be very nice in that zone. Any questions from the commission? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll just ask the, the silly question, just looking at the garage. So you've got a space in between there where you've got the driveway, driveway runoff swale and this six foot eight gap between where the addition is and the, the existing building. Is there a reason that the, the bays aren't over there, that it isn't just tighter? I mean, that would get rid of the whole net need to have the, the driveway in within the 35 foot yeah, zone. Yeah, there's a mud room there and we did work with the architect to try to push things back, move it around, and it it messes up the whole plant. So we did try that. That's partly what um, created the lag between the first part of the project and this part, because mm -hmm. we were working with them on that. Okay. And then 20, uh, and this is, uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with this, but 24 foot is pretty wide for, that. that's a two-bay garage, right? That's really tight. That's really tight? Yeah. By the time you your walls are... By the time they're uh, built, the walls are 10 inch, and then you sheetrock it, so you lose a foot on either side. Yeah. The doors are nine feet wide. Uh, I had a 24 foot garage. You ding car doors. You can't put bikes in there. You can't put the snow blower, the lawnmower. I can answer the X. <coughs> Answer the question a little, a little easier. So there's no access to the garage to the main floor of the house. So they're going to put stairs in. So the stairs would be essentially when they come down, right in the middle of the, where the cars would be. Right. So they had to bump it out to fit the stairs to go into the house. Got it. So the mudroom is there are also stairs that go up and down. Okay. Yeah, it's an architectural shoehorn job. Mm -hmm. All right. And then so you're going to be there's there's areas outside of this. You know, you've got a, a zone here that's that's proposed limit of extended driveway. The areas outside of that that's existing driveway, that's going to all be picked up and turned into grass or a landscape area? This area gets removed. Yep. Yep. And then there's, I guess, I'm, I'm not even sure how large it is, but there's a small area. It's a little sliver. Yeah. Outside of the proposed driveway. Yep. Yeah, down, down here, yep, that gets removed too. Okay. Yep. some uh, time here. So on the, when you take out the uh, Japanese knotweed, are you going to put some amended soil in there? What's, what's the plan yes. with that? To uh, on my, my little mitigation plan, mm -hmm. I talked about we're going to excavate the whole plant out. It is going to leave a hole. So we're going to uh, 
backfill that with clean loam and smooth that out, even the grade out to the, and match the adjacent grades. The erosion control along the driveway, um, so you're taking, so you're demolishing the garage and you're taking up the slab floor and then you're gonna excavate. So that's a lot of material coming in and out. The erosion control is along the driveway or is it set back? Because I saw some old erosion control kind of in the grassed area when we were out there. Um, it, it really, the, this is obviously a drafting error here. You don't want the erosion control to go across the driveway. Uh, it would be along the parallel of the driveway here. Just all we need to do is really get it to this point. Uh, you know, then we're, we're beyond the excavation. So this would allow vehicle dump truck to, to be backing right up the paved driveway to the work zone. Okay. So I was going to ask that you define that area a bit better. Um, I, when you have the 12-inch mulch sock, it, no one sees it. It's not going to stop one of these trucks being backed up. Could you put in that area the orange construction fencing also, just backing up the erosion control so it's more visible? Sure. Yep. And then where are the two spots for the, this is the dumpster and the stockpile area? The, the dumpster will go, they'll just put a container right in the in the driveway here. Mm -hmm. um, they'll just back that right in and drop the container. Are they putting all the material that's being excavated into the container? No. Okay. Uh, as when they, that's for the demo. And then when they get to the excavation, you know, that, that material is just laid back adjacent to the foundation trench and then most of it's used for backfill again. Whatever isn't backfilled into the foundation trench will have to be taken off site. But you feel like there's enough room. So with, with my construction fence and the, and the erosion, that's gonna be the limit of work and except for yep. the knot weave removal, nothing should happen in that, in that right. area. Yeah, that's plenty of room. If they have to, I mean, they can just stockpile in the backyard. Here's the, the 100 foot buffer zone comes through uh, the batteries here. Uh, there we go. There's the 100 foot buffer. And so, I mean, we could always stockpile in the backyard, then you have the whole mass of the house that's your erosion control. go in I think it's it's a conservation issue so what there's this open space and utility easement in the back there and you've got the groundwater in that zone is, is there any problem with that or, or is that going to be forced to be pulled out of that area usually you're not allowed to put a structure in that utility zone I just want to make sure there's room to put that infiltrator somewhere uh, because it's a big portion of collecting the, yep. the new impervious. That could, if you, uh, if my battery holds out, um, we can easily shift that inside. If the terms of that utility easement prohibit putting an underground infiltration area in there, there's plenty of room to relocate that outside. It doesn't have to be a certain distance off for? Nope, okay. nope. It's not like a septic leaching field. Questions from the commission? I think Chuck, you you mentioned that um, the after the for the mitigation area after the um, excavation is performed. Um, did you mention that we were, that we wanted some sort of wetland? type soil to replace that? Or are you, because we're, I mean, we're not talking about, we're not talking about some sort of quasi low upland replication buffer there. I 
mean, I'm just trying to picture habitat-wise what this replication area, how, what's the intent of how it's going to function? Well, it's actually on the upland side of the line. Right. So it's not supposed to function as a wetland, but more as a buffer. Just to, right now, it's knotweed. It's part of a larger mass of knotweed. Uh, this is our first bite of that apple. And basically, it'll convert that knotweed monoculture to shrubby buffers and habitat. So besides the shrubs, is there going to be some sort of herbaceous laid out as well to kind of cover the area? Well, that's a good question. Uh, we know that the knotweed is probably going to try to reemerge if, if we miss any of the little pieces. Uh, we are going to have to go in there. Lori's going to have to go in there and either dig. The, the preference would be to try to dig out those reemergent seedlings. Uh, or spot treat them with an herbicide. But you're talking about in the wetland. No, I'm talking, I'm talking in the in the oh, buffer in, area. In, in the rep in yeah. the in the mitigation area. Right. Not area. It's not a very big area, but uh, it's the intent was to let it go natural, right, Chuck? We talked about just not mowing in amongst the shrubs. We didn't want lawn there, so yeah, that was one of my my thoughts, but. Um, it's, you know, I'm just trying to think in my own head what's the difference between just like, you know, Bill can help me out. What's the difference between upland loom and wetland loom? A little more mulch no, or something I like that? Didn't, just mixed didn't in? Think that it was more no, no, I didn't think it was, I knew it wasn't replicated wetland, but I'm just, I'm just trying to, I mean, we do know this is right on the wetland line, so it is going to be, there is going to be, potential for seasonal inundation and what's a good plan you know besides the bushes what is another good plan to kind of fill in the gaps and create that space that's why I was thinking the herbaceous cover so that's seasonal kind of, it's, it's going to take off I mean when they kill off I'm assuming, I'm assuming you know, this is probably at several steps, so I'm sure step one is going to happen with this project, and step two is probably going to happen. And then after that, depending on how hard it is, we'll get into step three. So just step one, to remove the material and then put in the sweet pepper bush and maybe a mulch layer on top and then monitor that for invasives. And then the next year, to get in there in the fall, or is it the fall that you decided on, or was it any time with the method you chose with the glyphosate? Uh, it, it could be any time. Yeah. So to get in there at some point and then just take another five feet out of it and then just cut those down. Yeah. And then once that happens, the whatever is in the seed bank will start emerging. And that might travel forward. Now I, I think Bill was saying that it doesn't it's it's gonna be really hard to get the knotweed out and get whatever's in the seed bank to grow. But I think that if you just keep looking at it and then you get those two sections, you know, set up, then you can move on from there. Um, so as far as establishing this mitigation area with something else, I think it will move in and grow in on its own. And Lori might say, hey, look, um, there's a big gap in between all this and I'm, I can uh, put something else. But I, I think what's there compared to the work that's being done is, is, is pretty good. There's some pretty Six. profuse growth of herbaceous stuff along the wood edge too, and that's gonna move right in. But it always does. I want to see pictures of Lori before and after attacking the dogweed. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Let's we'll see a chronology of pictures. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> something that we can look at on the uh, certificate of compliance also. Right. Okay, I didn't have any other questions. There's I had just Bill, one more. Uh, uh, oh, go ahead. You, you had, I think, some good info, and, and I see the numbers for the stormwater, but you, you mentioned the net 
decrease of impervious area, or I think is, is what you were... No, oh, net increase. Mm -hmm. in, so it's, it's, it's like uh, 500. That's right here. 585 or something. That's, that's uh, just associated with the driveway, right? No, nope. the addition, the so walkways, the drive. Yeah, I guess it's, I, it's because there's stuff that's that's leaving. Uh, okay. It's going that's from 2580 to 3165. Increase of 585. You're taking out some though too, right? So there's a. a the engineer pointed out that little. Tiny little strip. Yeah. Now that is that really the only thing that's getting taken? Yeah. Okay. All right. Then it's probably not going to make a difference. Well, they're putting in two call techs, right? Yeah. yeah. It's going to have the capacity. I mean, it, it easily has the capacity. I'm not worried about that. I was just more from a standpoint of it, it all supports the more, the more work they're doing as well as put some in, it's still beneficial. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, Chuck. Do you got a proposed stairway? There's, a, there's an existing stairway. It's right on the edge of the... Is this going to be... Um, it's just on the edge of the right, the right side of the screen there. Is, is that going to be a new stairway? No, that's already there. That's already there. Okay, that's not actually proposed. Okay. I put on a lot of the stuff that was already allowed in the minor project. I just put it on here to make a complete plan. Okay. Um, can I just ask one, uh, one other question? Um, you're not entirely sure where the nearby vernal pool is. Is that, is that correct? Um, what I uh, implied was the uh, natural heritage data layer shows a blue star in an area where there's not a vernal pool. And so it most likely, and, and they're historically incorrect. So most likely I have an attachment in the notice of intent. It's that open water body that we can see. And that's about 135 feet away. From what, from the property from line? From the project. Did you have another question? Yeah, I, 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 th I actually think it's 135 feet away from the mitigation area, so okay. where I measured it out. So it's a little bit further away. Okay. Yes, it's right, in the order right. of conditions. Um, and I, yeah, I did have a question. So I, I know that when this came in uh, in the past, whenever the house was built and the garage was built, they called that area riverfront. Did you look into that? Did you do stream stats on that? Or that's not something you went to. I, I didn't, I was just wondering what steps you went through because I, it, they did call it Riverfront before. No, I don't even think it's shown on the USGS as a stream. It never okay. entered my mind. Yeah. So I was reviewing the old order of conditions at the Riverfront area and so. Based on what? I don't know. <laughs> I did, I, did, they, did they point to any? Well, the, or, or, the order of conditions didn't point to anything. No, it just called it riverfront, and then it said, this is why we're allowing this, and gave the section of the riverfront, uh, you know, 585 or whatever it was. What year was it, Chuck? Do you remember? Um, no, I don't. Uh, the, that permit was 98. 98? Okay. You know when they built the garage? Yeah. 98. Yeah. With some, um, yeah, there was all the stuff in Bethune, right? Because the Bethune's right on the other side of this. We didn't call it riverfront. I know we didn't call it riverfront there, right? No, I was, but it, no, I died. No, you know that would be the closest thing that I, I just want to feel to right? put it on record that he, you know, yeah. hey, I check stream stats. It's just absolutely not. It doesn't have the blue line. It's not line. shown on the USGS yes. map. So you know, I just wanted to put that <laughs> stuff out there. All I'll say is in 1998, we were, the riverfront regs came in effect in 96, and we were still arguing about it until about 2005. What's a stream? What isn't a stream? What's a mean high water? So I'd say there's probably some early growing pains What's a canal? on riverfront. <laughs> Is there anything else that we need um, with this 
application? No, I think Bill didn't do any of the work today because I sent him four or five emails. So right. I've got my answers back. <laughs> um, we'll do that schedule right up. Was there something about in engineering? Nope, we got that last last minute. It was like the last email I got. So no, no, that was all taken Six. care of. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not waiting for anything at this point. Motion. All right. um, I make a motion to approve the variance request. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Make a motion to close the hearing. Second. All those in favor? Any any additional conditions? Are you satisfied with the standard? What I added with a construction fence. I'm fine with it. Okay. Great. Standard conditions are fine. All right. Okay. Thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for the effort today. I appreciate it. Yeah. And yesterday. <laughs> Work cut out for the last couple of years. Yeah, I will, I'll take pictures. Yeah. Shh, shh, shh. Of me. Have a good night. Okay. Thank you Thank so you. much. Yep. Appreciate it. Okay. Give me a call. I'll call you later. I'll actually be okay. working from home tomorrow, so that's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Limits of resource area final determination. Can you, uh, um, I would want you to uh, get my, my, uh, make a motion to issue this. No, hold on a second. I just lost my thought. Can Steve Erickson, uh, can we deal with that so Steve can leave? Oh, just, yeah. Uh, okay. mention that, um, Is that okay, Bill? Yeah, sure. So, I'm sorry. Just to, just read what it sure. says on, uh, infrastructure 740. We just closed, right? We closed. closed. Yeah. We need to. Are we making a motion to issue this as well? Yeah. I didn't realize you had this prepared. I heard two. Close and issue. No, no variance. No, we just it was the variance. Variance then closed. Make, an issue, make a motion to issue. Motion to issue. Make a motion to issue the order of conditions for 59 Forest Street. Second. All those in favor? Sorry. I didn't want to move on. Good I catch. And no, it's ready. I didn't either. Okay, um, got a um, notice of intent 270-0714, 135, 139, 149R, Howard Street, map 10, lots 75, 76, and 77, infrastructure holders, LLC update. to the right. next meeting. So have you make a request? No, I got a request in, in, in the mail. I don't I So I just make a motion to continue. Is that what we're doing? You can if you want, but I have one in the mail. Usually we just Oh, you, yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. You wanna give an update or you don't want to give an update? What you don't have well, to. Mike and I talked about the letter that we, we had received from the applicant in Norse Environment Mental Norse Environment um, asking us to you know go out into the to say that they felt the Horsley Witten um, report regarding the uh, wetland alleged wetland area upstream of the gradient of the intermittent channel um, was not wetland and they said that they, the, the report wasn't definitive but when we looked at the RFP we asked them as a third party review you know certain things and, and we what they reported on was what we had asked them so I took issue we took issue with it not being definitive and they wanted us to as a commission to go out and meet out with Norse and the applicant to go over that area but 
we, I strongly feel that we still need a third party review, you know, being Worsley and Winton to take a look at that. And they, they, weren't, they didn't do any definitive soil evaluation out there. Um, but did notice that there were definitely wetland uh, vegetation, as I think you had observed uh, previously, um, and Chuck and I had too. And I, Anika, had you gone out to the site? Probably, I haven't. I haven't. Yeah, maybe a, a while ago. Yeah. And Dave, I don't know if you had either. I didn't. But are you saying that for the third party review that Horsley wouldn't? When did not complete what they were supposed to? No, that's not what I'm saying. They did do what we asked them to do. Um, and we are now wanting them to also take a look at the soils at the, in that location, because that's, that's an issue, I, th I believe. Um, so we don't know if they have enough money in their budget to do that or not. Have you? No, I haven't heard back from them. Okay. So the applicant is, so So I sent, the, I summarized the, what you and Mike came up with, and I sent it to the applicant, and, and the result of that was they agree, and that we should all meet at the site, set it up, and if more money's needed, they're okay with that that part too. So I just have to set it up at this point and get back to the applicant and set up that site for that. I would like to do it so we can get on to the next meeting, like so the 25th. So, but I sent Horsley Witten a email two days ago. Couldn't get back to it today with the meeting and all, but I'll call them tomorrow and see if uh, we can find something. And so that's, you know, other than that, um, Nothing else to report. Okay. Steve, do you have anything to say? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Did you have? Do you have anything to say, Steve? Did you hear us? We think that no, I, I can only hear a portion of the conversation. But we just think that wetland delineation is wrong, and they weren't definitive. They didn't even check the soils in the area that we're concerned about. The rest of it is fine. We have no problem with it. But that particular area. They were inconclusive, not definitive, and wrong. So ultimately, I think what, what we've talked about here, Steve, is, is having the commission, yourself, or, or you know, Norris, and, and our third party reviewer uh, all go out to the site and look at this area, look at the soils, look at the vegetation, look at all the indicators together. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? So what we've we've talked about here tonight, and I think what we've indicated in our emails is having Norris, the, the applicant's representative Norris, the commission, and our third-party reviewer, Horsley Witten, all go and look at this area together. That makes perfect sense to us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's a, That's all we want. And I think that's the next step. Okay. All right. So can I get a motion to continue this to the 25th? So moved. All Second. All those in favor? Thank you. So, thank thanks, you. Steve. Thanks, Steve. All right, Steve, thanks. All right, so uh, next on the agenda, Ooh, Frockery Lane. Going back to. Get back to work, though. <laughs> <laughs> Limits of Resource Area, Final Determination 3, Zachary Lane, <clears throat> map 51, lot 114, Newman. Uh, so, Brian called me initially. Uh, because he, he was thinking about removing some trees and, and he talked to, to Chuck and they said, well, you might need to get the wetlands. There's a, a little wetland area in your backyard. You may need to have that delineated. And uh, some time went by, as I recollect, and I called Brian and he said, well, that's all set. But I still would like you to come by and just take a look at this area because uh, it's been called a wetland. And uh, anyway, I'd like you to look at it. So he sent me some information, uh, some correspondence and some kind of wetland replication plan dated 2004. Uh, and so I said, all right, well, somebody already looked at it. Somebody said there's wetlands back there. And I, when I went out there back in um, 
in August, early August. I took a look at this area. It's a very small area. I'd say it's about 500, 600 square feet. Yeah, maybe as big as this room, the, the, the entire wooded area that's sort of uh, just isolated. All, all, the, all the property, all the remaining land on this site is maintained as lawn and landscaping. Um, the, the areas, there's a fence here and there's a fence here. And on the other side of this fence, it's lawn and landscaping right up to the fence. Same thing with here. This is sloping down right to the fence. This is grass. I think there's a deck in the backyard here. Uh, it's really on the high point of the neighborhood. So it doesn't make any sense that this area may have been called a weapon. So I looked at the plant community. And you can walk in there and easily see there was a lot of upland plants in there, very few wetland plants. So I did, you know, uh, a, a data plot, a vegetation data plot. I went to the lowest part of the area, uh, down in, in in this corner here, and did a data plot. And I've included that plot with uh, my letter to Brian. And. Uh, it comes out rather conclusively that it's an upland plant community in there. As the commission knows, to, to be a wetland, it has to have uh, soils, vegetation, and hydrology. And it clearly does not have vegetation. The areas that were sort of mapped according to the sketch as being wetland, most of that did not have any hydric soil at all. Most of it was bright upland color soil. Uh, some areas were mixed. We, uh, we did some augers while we were there yesterday. We saw that the, most of the material in the lower part of that area shown on this 2004 plan was a fill soil. Uh, bits of stone and, and, and all, but it wasn't natural. So uh, my conclusion to Brian was, I didn't think it was a wetland. It can't be a wetland because it doesn't have a vegetation community. The geographic landscape, is, this is up on, on the highest point of the neighborhood. There is vegetation, or there, there's lawn vegetation on four sides of this. And um, to me, it didn't make any sense. So I said as much in my letter that Brian shared with you. So. Uh, I think it would be reasonable for the commission to make an assessment that this is, it's not a wetland today. I can't speak for what somebody looked at in 2004, but it's not a wetland today. So uh, we'd be looking for a finding or a determination that um, it's, there's no conservation commission jurisdiction. Okay, we, um we met with Bill Manuel out yesterday and walked the area. And um, yeah, there are a few small wetland plants there, but they're not dominant other than the jewel weed, which is in the abrasious layer. But the rest of it is pretty, pretty dry, indicative of dry conditions uh, as far as the vegetation is concerned. And you know, Chuck had asked Bill to um, do some augers in different areas to see what the soils were like and uh, it looked like it was all, you know, fill, which you typically find, I think, in a situation like this and, and not indicative of a hydric soil. Chuck, do you want to add anything? No, I, I you know, we did, we spent, we spent a, a good bit of time there talking about a lot of the individual plants I think there was only one that was a, a wetland indicator and after the three or four I asked Bill about and so th this has always been an odd corner of this lot at 3 Zachary Lane and I remember it probably my first year here with, with one owner, maybe that was original owner and the last owner who had who had dumped some debris in there and one of the neighbors called or someone called and said that they're filling in this wetland. 
but it's it's always been an unusual, you know, curious to me why it was why it was called the well with the fact that it's it's in the corner, it's on the high high end of the street, um, the lawn and down from it and next to it, those areas of lawn. There was no uh, culvert that feeds it. It was there was one area that looked kind of like it was washed out, but I didn't see I didn't see any kind of opening or culvert or any way that water could get into it. And although it looked washed out, it didn't look like it was eroded in any way or or dirt was pushed through the first flush throughout this uh, depression. Um, that's my impressions were kind of backed up with what Bill said. Uh, I was happy that some homeowner had decided to finally take this on. So that's, that's really where I stand. So Chuck, all the abutting properties um, behind Zachary, behind the house, mm -hmm. those are all, there's like in all of our permits, there's no jurisdictional wetland line shown on any of those other plans. Well, maybe associated with this wetland, with this, with this wetland, yeah. Did we have something come in at that long ago for Zachary Lane? Was, was it not near this? Well, this th this came in on a, on a violation when they would, did the work underneath uh, the porch. They put in some pavers and they had to dig down that topsoil and they just dumped it in this low spot. And at that point, I, I told them to get it out. So, but. Do other, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that every site that that that's around there, if they had to do something, they would have to deal with the setback of this area. But it, but the wetland, but the historic 2004 wetland line didn't. Is there any evidence of anything else near there from a wetland line perspective? is sloping in this direction, but it's also sloping in this direction. This, the lawn here is higher, and it comes. There's a fence that goes right along the back property line, and that comes right. It slopes right down to the fence, and there's grass right to the fence line. Uh, right over here, this property line, uh, there is landscaping and mulch right up to the other side of the fence, and there are some concrete markers that were uh, the previous owners had to put in, but you can see the lawn at Three Zachary is right up to those markers. I kind of remember this. So I was just showing Chuck that I kind of remember this from 2016. Uh, I think the owner had come in, the owner, I don't know if you were the owner at that time, but the owner had come in and said they want to do some cleanup and they've been told like they can't do anything in there because of this. Right. I remember even back then saying, I guess it's an isolated wetland, but yeah, tell them to, to maintenance is maintenance. Um, I mean, yeah. So, so Bill, do you have a site plan that shows where you took the soil sample locations and and looked at the fill and stuff like that? No, because I didn't. I didn't have. I mean, I received this, but I then I said, where's where's the sketch showing? Where you investigated. I didn't prepare any sketch, but I can. Uh, I mean, the area, as I said, it's about as big as this room. And no, it's less than this. It's less than this size, actually. So I, I basically went to the. Everything's sloping in this direction, and I went to the lowest part, and I was probably 15 feet off of this property line, and maybe 15 feet off of the back property line. Let me get the sketch back up there.
So it would have been, you know, about in this location, just relatively speaking. The, and also those WF4, WF3, just just being out there again, I, I would say that's that almost seems like the top of the, you know, like almost like top of bank or something. When I was looking at that, kind of get ready for the meeting, I said that, you know, the, the wetland area would be more in the center, the lowest part. Right. It was a so. massive red oak, you know, right back here on the, uh, right in this area, but it was probably a 24 inch red oak, maybe a 20 inch. White ash overstory. So there's, uh, so we can't make a determination about this because we don't have application of any kind in front of us. So the next step would be to, um, the applicant would file a request for determination, present, you know, it sounds like a NEPA needs something, and maybe that could be part of that application. And then, you know, to, to talk about this again, but, um, you know, this is, this is one of those things where, yeah, that depression's there. And it's been there a long time, and people have there's there's actually granite bounds there also, but the site visit that me and Becky went to, we asked every question we could think of, and we dug a lot, and we looked around, we looked through the fence, looked at the the trees and the vegetation, and it, you know, we always talk about Peter Fletcher. I think that. Becky really loves Peter Fletcher, an old colleague of hers, and he says, you know, when it when it doesn't make sense, take your head out of the hole and uh, and look around. And what's what you're looking at is upland upland plant community. So, I mean, that's it, it doesn't have to be decided tonight, but this is, you know, this actually has to come in on a, on a different application. But well, it right. would be nice to know determinations that there's what no else knowledge. needs to be in that application. There is. So, well, the RDA process would be appropriate because you there is a, a question or a, a statement that is this an area subject to jurisdiction under your bylaw in the Wetlands Protection Act? So that's what we're looking for is is that determination. Right, but I'm not looking at an RDA right now. That's correct. No, that's that's what we're talking yeah. about. That. Okay. Do you, do you need any more paperwork than we have here tonight? Well, you know, if um, you know, if Mr. Manuel went out and did some investigation work and has some data to present to us, you know, to, to sort of give evidence to what you're saying here, you know, we need to see that data. Is that what the third? Uh, yes. He's got a plot. That's what. The area is really small enough that one data plot, it encompasses a 30-foot radius for the, the overstory. It, I mean, if I could do another one, but I'd be overlapping the two data plots. Yeah. And you said that plot was about 15 feet off the both back. Yeah, it was in that back, the lowest, certainly the lowest area of the lot. At this point, we just say thank you, and when the RDA comes in, the RDA. Do you comes need in. anything more? Do you need any soil borings? A soil boring to accompany this? Or? That's my point. I thought you did need a soil boring. Uh, we <laughs> poked around while we were there. We, we didn't we record any of the information, and frankly, it's not necessary given that the vegetation is, yeah. is not even close to being a, a but, wetland plant community. But I, but I did ask Bill to do a boring, and, and then I asked him to, to go in even deeper and to see what's under whatever that top layer of fill was, and we, we still didn't get anything. So, I mean, 
and I was, I wanted to be sure too. Yeah. You know, I mean, because those people that did the patio could have just put 12 inches on top of what was there in the past. So I wanted yeah, to get through that layer. Sometimes. Yeah. So, right. I mean, this isn't, this is serious. I mean, you're just, you're decommissioning this wetland. I get it. Someone thought it was a wetland at one point. But and it may have functioned at a, as a wetland at, at one point, but it's... I have no idea how that would have been. But, um... I mean, prior to development, maybe? Maybe it was an a artifact. pool at one point or something like you, that. You know, I mean, land use changes and drainage changes. And Do you think it was a vernal pool at some point? I have no idea. No, I'm just saying, like, there's no way that it... That it May, it, the, the, this right it's now, this right down. now might be a glorified drainage swale, just a little localized low point. You know where all the great localized to understand drainage what, goes to. What but the real story was with, behind this. No, I don't have enough information in front of me to wrap my head around that story. So, so, so this plan that you're looking at on the screen and an RDA with a request, you know, from the applicant. Um, anything else? Is, is anything else needed? I've never really gone through this process before. I, I can't. Well, I think you're asking the right questions. I, I, What's the know. plant community? What are the soils like? Yeah. Do we have the plant community there? Do you want to add, you want to add the soils in? You want to, do you want I think something we should. on that? I think we should have some soils information. I mean, I think we need to have evidence that we could do that, or we could just do another site visit, which I think would be more beneficial. If Bill could spend his time just meeting more of the people that didn't make it there. I, I know this site. I've been to this site a number of times. I, I'm familiar with it. You just want something for the record. That I just want something, do. right. Oh, okay. I need some evidence if, if, you know. To me, it's not difficult because as, you know, what the scientists, we, we go through and we evaluate things, and if it doesn't meet the three criteria, we move on. So as soon as I walked in there and I said, well, I see all upland plants here, except for there was some arrowwood shrubs, but I mean, I quickly do the data plot and, and find it wasn't a predominantly wetland plant community and you move on. That, yeah, I, think, I, think, I don't know what I want to speak for you, but I think what I'm hearing is when the application comes in, it would be nice to just have, even if it's on this plan, a, a, a plot of, we, we took a, a boring or a probe here, and the, the soils indicated that it wasn't a wetland. Or, yeah, you know, we that, investigated soils about to this way, depth. There was no hydric soils. Something's in it for the record. No, just, I mean, some sort of record. I mean, if, if we're going to change um, a jurisdictional area to not no longer be jurisdictional, I want to I want to have it sort of put in posterity that there were ways we did it, and we had evidence, and we had data. And, That's fair. Yeah. I mean, I, d I understand and I'm not questioning, you know, the technical observations you all made. I, you know, it's it's all valid, but I just want to make sure it's put together, you know, for the next Conservation Commission so that when they go back in case something they don't changes. Have to would, so, so in, yeah, 2029 when they're saying, what yeah. the hell were they doing in 2019? Right. Crazy. Who's that? What were they thinking? How did they make that decision? Well. A bunch of cowboys on that yeah, commission. That's right. They have to go back to the RCTV video and, you know, All right. pull our faces up and. Okay. All right. All that. That's some good direction. I appreciate the coming out to see the site and I assume we'll be back with a request for determination. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks. And um, we have Mr. Williams here for 82 Fairchild Drive. Yes. Okay, yep. All right, thanks. You love those? Yeah, Dylan, you can pick up the... Uh
didn't get these mic. Oh, you forwarded it. They didn't get attached. Yeah. Eight? Sorry, I only printed up three. I'll uh, share yeah, with you, if that's that. okay. Yep. So, uh, at the last meeting, you asked me to come in with basically a plan of what it would look like with my um, landscaper. And I received an email from Chuck um, with regards to what was expected. And so I put together the best I could with the, what I would consider to be the closest thing to my, that I have to a site plan. With the plants and trees, actually, I'm, there's, there's, I think there's five trees and 10 plants, and, or 10 bushes that I'm doing. It's, Rebecca, it's actually where we stood and spoke, uh, with, where the three of us stood and spoke down that, uh, down the hill there, as the trees start to move down. That's, that's, so that's the plan that we put together. Okay, so just to refresh my memory here, the wetlands line, wetlands are along sort of like the right hand side property limit, correct? Where is it? I thought it went behind the shed, which was which is over here. This. Okay. It also goes here too, doesn't it? Oh, so it's a wraparound? Yeah. I can just I wanted to refresh my memory here. Yeah, you, you work near there or something? No, uh, I just, I used them for a lot of my... So... Yeah, do you know them? Yes. Right. I live in... <laughs> That's what I don't want to... He does all going up. up. There's a house right there. Um, Dave thought it wrapped around. Listen it? I thought it was over here behind the shed. Yeah. Pretty yeah, close behind and, the shed. And, and taking stuff out here. Right. So there's part of... The house is over here and this is the other one. Right. 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 That's mm -hmm. how I understand it. Okay. So how many? One, two, three, two, three, four, five. Five. Five, five, and five. Five roadies. I actually did more just because it would look better. All right. Okay. So, um, uh, the rhododendrons. Do you, do you wonder if they're native? Yeah. I think we'd have to look into that. I think Mike was trying to. Yeah. You know, I don't know how to figure that out. Google didn't tell me much. <laughs> yeah. The um. The yeah. room. Where's, where's Carl? R. R. Carl. R. Did you ask for native Scott? When, when no. Did, you did. You, 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 I'm sorry. Did you say Scott? Did, you, did I say that? It's okay. I just said Bill. Bill. Um, did you ask? So I sent them the link to your web. Did you see the website? Yeah. And I said everything can come from anything, either either ten bushes, five trees, or a combination of both to fill the air. Yeah. And I said to him, Dave. Have yeah, native. So he went to the Wagon Wheel Nursery and he and he asked for native a native planting plant. So it looks like. It's likely that those are, but we'd have to check into it because there's none of the. It doesn't give the scientific names. Well, Viburnum dentatum is a, a Latin name. Well, I don't have the paper. It's just uh, the one. But the other one is uh, Rhododendron. Well, max maximum. It sounds like a um, cultivar. So the, the five to seven trees planted are the arborvitaes. And then there's 10 more bushes after that. I'm just looking up up now. 
couple of rhododendrons, not the one he listed yet, though. Um, yeah, looks like the rhododendron, rhododendron. rhododendron maximum is called Rose Bay rhododendron, and it prefers moist soils. It's the internet. It's, a, it's, it's a, a facultative, I think it is. A, according yeah, to UMass Extension. Okay. Good. All right. And what about um, American Arborvitae? Should be. Uh, it's good. Their Latin name? Okay. I will search. That Rhodey is. Yeah, Mike. Mike had it first, but he wanted to let you guys have it. It seemed credit. like you guys were yeah. well in. Well, you can look up the Arbor Vitae then. <laughs> I did your work for you there, so. <laughs> um, so, do we want some more plantings, kind of a little bit more between, like a couple more between the rhododendron and the road? You want to move a couple of those plantings toward Fairchild Drive? Because I think that's more in line with where the wetlands are. Yeah. But yeah, so you, you don't mean, you mean Fairchild. Between the triangle and the road. Or is, is there everybody? Room? I, you know, I don't oh, there's even, a shed there. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I feel like that area that. was like, I, I, I think this is a good barrier in the corner that was opened up, right? I mean, this is where most of the stuff was taken. Better too, and it is also providing, you know, a screen. You can, yeah, there you go. Like, the driveway, there's, I think if you look from the street, it's... Yep, uh, and actually, it's it's a pretty good replacement ratio, too. So it's a pretty good replacement ratio, so, so yeah, I'm happy with this plan. Me too. Okay. Okay. I'm fine. What? So there's I, the fence in the yard waste that you mentioned at the last time. The what? Yard yeah. waste in the fence. Okay. So does it, I don't think that addresses the yard waste, and I'm not sure if you still want to do the fence. So the back page addresses the yard waste. Okay. Yeah. Move by hand without disturbing natural litter, dispose of all material at a proper composting facility. That sounds good. And then go just clean up a little and keep keep it set. Alright. Thought about it and said So are, are right we now, this doesn't make sense, so we're gonna we're gonna stick with what we got here. So um, procedurally um, I'm pretty sure it's okay to accept these as the plan to deal with the enforcement order. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think in, in the last meeting you had talked about him filing an RDA to replace the trees. So are we going to close this under an RDA or are we going to close this no. under the... Yeah. I think we should close it under the enforcement order. No, I didn't want him to file anything. I thought we were just doing the enforcement order. Okay. So... Now, that was my suggestion. I, there was a little pushback from the commission, but that's what I thought. Um, so, you know. Yeah, I think, I, um, no, I'm grateful. I'm glad we've got a plan. I'm glad we've, it, it makes sense. I think it addresses what the problem was. So, so. accepting the plan should be sufficient. Um, I'm, do we have a sense of timeline when, when the plans are going to get? Yeah, I'm guessing. He told me he thought it could be in there in the next four weeks. Okay, excellent. Good. Good, good time to Good grow. timing. Good time to Excellent plant. Excellent timing. Time. Yep, you want to get in there before the growing season closes. So, first week in October, second 15th. No, no later than the 15th. Well, actually, you can plant before frost. 
depending on the weather. <laughs> right, yeah. But depending on the weather, but usually on October average. October 15th, if it gets real cold, you know. But it sounds like you're going to be able to meet that deadline or, or that time frame or deadline. So I move we um, accept um, this submittal tonight as the planting plan sufficient to address the enforcement order. I'll second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you very much. Good to go. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Follow up with Thank an email, you. just if I need to. you come back out? Well, so. we'll, so you should let me know the day the work's happening or a couple days in advance what day they're going to come out, right. and then I would like to see it when they're finished. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. You too. Okay. Um, certificate of Compliance, 115 Howard Street, Map 10, Lot 168, McLaughlin. that site and um, walked along the fence and this was this was uh, an order of conditions that was for I'll read the description I think it was just for the, sh the porch in the front so they were going to do uh, Proposed 10 by 10 roofed entry, uh, 36.1 feet away from the wetland or the stream, and they were going to do an addition that was 8 by 16, and a deck that was 6 by 14, all in the back, all contained within a fenced-in area. So oh. I think we went into the back. And looked at that. Were you there with us? Yeah, I did. The, uh, yeah, and then we walked along the fence, along the stream, down towards the back. So this was originally. Uh, this was a while ago. I was actually surprised how. It's like. Um, let's see. Yeah, 2012. So it's 2012. Yeah, so, so we went. The, the day that we went, she needed more information of like what she needed to do to, to get this process together. Right. Yeah. And um, I remember. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, she so she submitted what I needed, which was an as-built plan, a letter from an engineer, um, and a request letter form. 8A, and I prepared a certificate of compliance, and I've I've been there several times because the MWRA, yeah, um, remember that they put silt in that stream, and we that. had to work on that stream a whole bunch. So I've been there for that, and I've been there several times for this project. So do I hear a motion? So I make a recommendation that you approve the certificate of compliance for 270-0610. So motion to approve. So moved. All those in favor? I'll second it just procedurally. Are you approving and issuing? Or are you going to issue the next? Do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion to issue. Second. All those in favor? This one's 366 Charles Street. This is a place that we've been to a lot. <laughs> um, and they're actually looking for a certificate of compliance. I think that the most of the commission went out. Uh, I think I did. But you've been there before. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've done so many at this, this spot at this point now. I'm confusing which one is which. It's the one that... <clears throat> It's an older house, and now it's got a, like a, did it have a circular driveway? Yeah, it's a circular driveway, like, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of weird. So, um, you went out there, looked at it. And the trees, um, the spruces, and the pines, and some other stuff that we asked to stay were all still in place. The lawn was established. Um, 
there was no erosion from the downspouts, and um, I felt that it was uh, exactly what we asked for, and as far as being, let's see, how many years off? Well, October 2018, that's when it was issued. So one year afterwards, everything seemed to be looking fine. It's pretty fast. Yeah, it was, uh, it was done by a builder. So the erosion control has been taken up? Because the letter says it should be removed. I think it was in place when we were there, when I was there. That needs to be. But it can be removed. It needs to get taken out. Wasn't it, didn't we tell them that they could just keep it away? Because it was a core lug? It was that. Mm. Is that what you do with those? Yeah, you can, but... I don't know if the erosion control is taken up or not. I'll, engineer, when, I, when I send this to them, I'll make sure that they understand that it can't. As can. of August 16, the engineer said it wasn't. So, if you guys didn't see it. Yeah, just... It wasn't? Up. It wasn't as of August 16. Yeah. No, it was there when I was there. Okay. So... It still needs to come out. Yeah. But I think we can... But that's not a condition of the... I don't think it's going to hold this up. It's just a housekeeping thing. It's usually, it's usually not even mentioned. You know, it's not like, oh, and then... It has been. Not consistently, but... Okay, but I move we issue the certificate of compliance for 366 Charles Street. A second. All those in favor? And I move we issue the certificate of compliance for 366 Charles second. Street. Second. I don't believe it's just saying, I don't believe it's just saying. Should I do it third time? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Um, 128 Fairchild. 28? It was for this one. Oh, yeah. So this is what you're missing. The the, um, the narrative on the restoration plan and just the, the picture. So anyways. I'll be back with me now. Sorry. If you want to. I'm sorry. I'll encourage I felt for sure that I sent it out, and then Becky said that she didn't. Oh, I, I, she wasn't I mean, a, unable to open it, but it says it says it was forwarded, so it should have come through, but it, <gasps> it just didn't. Okay. I, I don't know Good what's wrong please. with my find attached. No, I didn't receive the attachment. There was no attachment on my email. Hmm? So I wasn't crazed. No, there's no attachment on this well, email. Maybe I, I have some sage just advice for you guys. Just please keep it to yourself because well, it was you know, five I, hours ago, that's Chuck. That's I can do the most about it. <laughs> I, it was five <laughs> hours Not ago. at the meeting. Chuck, no, I told you. <laughs> it's six thirty. It was like quarter past six or something. Three forty-nine. No, I sent you an email. And you, whatever. You can blame me, but no one well, else can. Well, I, I received your email today at three forty-nine. Thanks. So Plenty that was not enough time. No, time. it's not, <laughs> not enough time. time. So do you have, so can you read this to us? 
Uh, no, I can't. Well, like, can you summarize? Yeah, but they're not here. So why do we need? Do we need to discuss it? Can we? Why is it on the agenda? Because it sh because we should have <laughs> received this. So the. Oh, here we go. All right. So the applicant. Um, can you read that now? Is that better? Mm. No, no, a little bigger. Not when you're moving it. So the applicant hired um, Greg Hockmuth from Williams and Sparagis to look at the damage done by the trees that were dropped into the wetland. And Greg thought that it would be worth it to put a, um, a plan together to uh, help with this area. So it looks like he's says that now um, to remove the twin oaks, two red maples, three American cherry bushes, and cranberry bush. Say, oh, cranberry bush. Big difference. There is yeah, no cherry like, bush. What are you talking about? <laughs> I have those in my yard. So that's what he's, he's proposing, it looks like, from this plan. And I have the plan on the other, if you guys are finished. So he looked at the depressions made in the wetland area, and he thought just with the steel rake that that could be raked out, someone who knew what they were doing. And he also said that it would benefit from some planting. So the planting plan for, I think this is it, Area. I'm going to bring up on the screen. Oh, oh those are the two red maples and three cranberry bush. Yeah. I asked him about the shading, and he felt like. Uh, any shading would be fine. Uh, that it's not gonna, it's not gonna lose. The wetland's not gonna lose out from getting more sun from that tree coming down and it taking the branches off several other trees. Uh, what else did he say? Uh, that that wasn't an issue. And the reason why I guess they're not, you know, the applicant and the consultant couldn't make it tonight. But I felt that this was okay because we can look at it when we do the certificate of compliance after the planting is in and to see that. And the seed bank is intact. So the wetland, um, although got damaged a bit and some trees uh, got scraped up, it, it, it looks like everything's gonna be fine in that area. So. Can you um, resend the attachment mm -hmm. so I can look at this a little bit in more depth? Not just to get the actual specifics, because so basically they're proposing to not just remind me. So they're proposing to not plant anything. They're proposing to they're going to lift out <coughs> existing trees and. Two red maples, no, the three red, the American two red maples. cranberry bush. Three cranberry bush. Right, and there, there, um, there, there was some like depression because they had some yeah. equipment in yeah. there. So they're going to hand rake that out and then put in a wetland seed mix okay. and in those other okay. two red maples and three cranberry bush. So they okay. in in the wetland area. Okay, had, got like well, then, yeah. Then you don't need to send it to me. It just wasn't too clear. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, you guys, I know you just, not around, not around, and, uh, but, if, oh. but if I heard, I would have been, I'm just right there at the desk. I didn't, Excuse how me. did I know? Excuse me, I even talked to you this afternoon about this. Hey, you I know what? And I couldn't get that one, and then I couldn't get the thing that you sent to Norse and the applicant. I'm sorry. If someone else called, I would have thought this was real. 
Oh, thank you. Yeah, I did call you. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was like, oh, what's going on? But, um... <laughs> there was not enough time. It was fun. So, with, so does everyone agree with my plan, which is that we've had a professional look at this. It, there was some damage. They've come up with a plan. I think it's it, it seems pretty thorough the to me. The plan makes sense. Yeah, the plan it makes, makes sense. sense. It and it's fits. not real intrusive. That's and we can we can look at the results of this yeah. in, uh, when we do the but, uh, certificate of compliance. But also, I also, you know, want to hear that their contractor has now stopped doing some of that scouring of other trees, scouring off the bark, that they're being more careful of the limit of work. The contractor that it, that's there now is the one that's doing the group, the landscaping and building stone wall. The one that did this was the tree removal guy. He was gone right after the trees were removed. Okay, so he's not going to be back on. Okay. No. Okay, well, that's a good update. Uh, okay, so... Negro Dams at 55 Walkers Brook Drive. Have you seen? No. What's what's going on? So there's beaver Where? activity at 55 Walkers Brook Drive. They oh, seem to have moved in backyard? about two yes. weeks ago. What? Seem to have moved in about two weeks ago. They're around usually between 10 and 2. <laughs> Then they move off and they <laughs> Do they collect, get dropped off they and take off? Their, their collect their kids and then go kids. walk their dog? And they walk their dog. That's cool. <laughs> I can relate. It's funny how I mean everything sounds like sounds connected. like they could find a carpool buddy. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Or at least a walking buddy. Well, those are hard to come by these days, so <laughs> look out. <laughs> see what this one is. Now um, we've had we've had this issue over here before, right? Not here, but we've had it. Not here. here. I thought this was where other places. No, I thought we did have something over here. But well, I thought So it's usually on tract road, which is down, down through the swamp, like behind Home Depot and then bang you're in that oh. area. So both dams are located south of Walkersburg Drive and west of North uh, New Crossing Road. The locations of the dam have become a public safety issue, uh, result, um, resulting in consistent excessive flooding of local businesses. Uh, trapping permit has been secured by the health department uh, to trap out the beavers. A locust map of the dam's location are included in this request. And the request comes from the civil engineer, um, Alex Rizicki, and he's s saying a similar thing here, which is that it's a health and safety issue. Uh, So, I just want to... Are these located in, in the swale that's in front of the uh, medical building? No, uh, the, the plan's coming up, so uh, it didn't say it in the other one, so I just want to go back. He's the senior civil engineer down there, and that's... So we needed someone to deem this health and safety, and so the senior civil engineer could do that. Here's the, here's the plan. And um, those two red dots, let me zoom in on that. Those two, here's the pool out front, Walker's Book Drive. Here's the. Why do you say west of New Crossing Road? Wait, that's what I just, yeah. Why do you say west? It's not, it's east it's of east. New Crossing. It's south of, okay. South yeah. of Walker's Brook, but east of. New Crossing. That's what why I asked if it was in that's, front of that's the why I was medical like, I building. I was with you on that, Dave. Yeah, so those are the two locations. They've been oh. there a while. Hmm. And this this location, based on my experience, is not a good location for beaver deceivers. No. Because it's a straight channel, and it's very hard to make that work. 
China Strait Channel. Um, also not a lot of food there. Yeah, so uh, this, is a, this is a problem. And the other, the other part of this problem is they used to be up in this area, across from the, the garage. On and the other side now, of the now they're moving down, and they're moving down. So there's probably several dams in this area. So the trapper has asked that he's asked for a 30-day. Um, I don't know what his exact words were. 30-day. 30-day temporary breaching permit. Anybody? What does that do? He just goes in and... He just goes in and wrecks the dam. But I was wondering, was that on, like, Fish and Wildlife? You know, the 30-day breaching permit? And I called him up and I asked him that same question and couldn't really understand. He left me a message and I didn't understand his answer. So I just came up with what I thought it was, which was a uh, an emergency certification allowing work for the next 30 days. So the breaching slowly released water from the channel to get the water elevation to start dropping. The beaver dam cannot be breached more than six inches deep by 30 inches wide within a 24 hour time frame. Once the water on both sides of the dam have been equalized, the beaver dam can be removed altogether. It's the wrong spot for beaver dams. There are two beaver dam locations at 55 Walker's Brook Drive. This emergency, uh, that, that's covered under this emergency certification. So the only special condition I have is notify the conservation office um, when the work is complete. We can't issue this without a start date and a completion date. So they asked for that to happen, but I got from his email, this trapper said that he wanted to start on the 13th. And so that's what I put in. That's September Friday. 13th is the start date, and October 12th, they have to be finished by they only have a 10-day trapping permit, and the way that works is you get two of those for each location. I mean, you can kind of fool around with that. And then once you don't get the, the beaver out after two 10-day emergency permits, you have to ask or actually request from Ma uh, Mass Fish and Wildlife a 30-day permit, but they have to approve that. How do they kill the beavers? They use a conibear trap. It's, it's uh like two bars snapping together over their head. Oh, when they trap them? Yeah. That kills them? Yeah. So it's considered humane, um, but, <coughs> you know, I wouldn't want it to happen to me. <laughs> <But> <laughs> okay. So we have the dates. That's not holding us back. No, I just need this signed, okay. and it, we're all set. And then you just you understand the situation. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, usually this, you know, have they tried other things? Can other things be tried? Is the creating habitat a beaver dam creates habitat? The commission has pushed back from that, but not in, not in this situation because of where it is and the straight channel. At least in my opinion. Do you think there's anything that's being done in, in Wakefield? What's that? You know, if there's anything being done in Wakefield for that? For these, for this thing here? Beaver, yeah. I haven't heard can, about any see. problems in Wakefield about beaver. They haven't, I haven't heard about that. You can see behind the car dealership as you're coming down to 128. You can see over the edge, you can see that there's beaver in there. Now from one. Down one twenty. You mean um, the Honda? No, the the uh, Volvo dealership on the Wakefield side of one twenty eight. Subaru Volvo. Subaru Volvo, yeah. Behind that, behind on the other side of the railroad tracks. There's a uh, beaver evidence in there. Good picture. Uh, I was looking for Google Earth. Um, 
All right, so I just need this signed. Is that? There you go. Should we make a motion? Yeah. Yeah. Make a motion to issue the emergency insert. Second. All those in favor? Everybody was in favor. I have a bill, water and sewer bill. What's that? <laughs> Throw a spitball at me. It's no spitball. What are they teaching you over there? <laughs> Nothing good. I have a bill for $19.71 from the town of Reading. Water and sewer bill for our parking access to Bear Meadow. Make a motion to pay. And I get a motion okay. to pay this bill. They no longer let, if you pay it early, it used to be on. Just had a motion and a second. Good All those in favor. Don't be putting that on. It's going up. It's going up in price. It used to be sixteen dollars. Home Depot is going to be reclaimed. Is that when they all rise just the top layer and then? Oh, yeah. So they're gonna they're doing the parking lot at Home Depot. They're going to do it in phases. Starts this Sunday night. Um, Home Depot was getting an inspection for something else, and um, the building commissioner heard them talk about this or saw some trucks out there or something. Told them to come down to Town Hall and uh, make sure that everyone's okay with it. So I put some conditions on that. All the storm drains need to be covered. If it looks like it's raining, they're going to have to put out some erosion control until they can sweep that out. And also that I told them they're responsible for the area in front of um, Walkersbrook Drive, so they could just run down the, the sweeper in that area and just make sure that's all clean. It's going to let me know when they start, when they finish, and, I'll, and I will check it out. But feel free to comment timely if uh, you see anything. Well, I was, it was really just, I'm tired of reading this letter. Oh, yeah, well, whoa. Um, <sighs> anything, anything, oh, um, I just wanted to let you know that I made a, That's all I have, guys, on this. Okay. Is there anything? We got, I sent out the, so the appeal for 107, I sent that to you guys. Mike was yeah. reading it, I saw that. And I don't have any more information other than it was very hard to read. It was copied in a way that didn't get the entire page yeah. on the didn't copy. Get all the words. The full and words. I'm wondering if DEP is going to got the original or a copy like that because it's going to be really hard for them to understand it. Even if they've got all the words, it's still going to be hard to understand. I don't know why it would have not been typed. Did you want to summarize anything? Mm -hmm. Becky, do you want to say a few words about the what you read? About the appeal? Hmm. I don't think you need to. It was hard to understand. It was. Were there past violations? I, I, I no. You keep yeah, on getting referred to. Yeah, there was. There were. There was. There was cutting. That was in violation, right? Well, Something in the back. What's it? So. I, I, so. The owner did some work without permission. That, that's that's where that's this the, all starts. That's, the that's where it all started. Was but there something before just, that? But it wasn't just us. It was it was there was like a, a you know material around. It was unclean. So the building department, the health agent, myself had to 
look at the site and then make an evaluation. And you know, that's where I ended up sending Michael a letter, which has started this this whole thing. Yeah. So there was that activity. I think she's calling it a violation. When I read this or listened to her at the meetings, it seemed to be that the violation was something that she, she actually thought we did something about. Like there was an enforcement order out there, and there, there never was. And there never was. There was just a letter to come into the meeting outlining what I saw and that I wanted to discuss. So she, so, so if the, what, there was cutting of trees a couple along her fence, but then also they didn't put in the bushes they had, were supposed to have put in between, you know, right by the dumpster? No, the variance that um, Jeff Brim sent at the last, at the last email, the very last night, I guess we had that, and he talked about um, something, and I'm just remembering this, uh, five or four, tr five trees. Right. That was the vial, five trees, and it was like, it was one tree, and it was five abravites that were taken out by the plow over time. So that encompassed the violation or the work done before permission. He was going to take out four trees with his project, and you know whatever. So we got nine. He was going to replant eleven. So that's what we have. There was one on the corner. You know who knows what it looked like, but I think that it that there was some hollowness to it at the base. And I think Dave said it saw the same yeah, thing. Yeah, right. We saw that. Wasn't there some trees along that back driveway that were cut down? Was that her impl was that her idea of a violation? There were those. She mentioned that a few times. And we looked at that. I remember yeah. you and I were there. Yeah. And I don't like the, the weed maple trees that were there. Right. Mr. Palmer had said that what they were doing is they were they were drooping over on, especially with snow load on them, and they were hanging on the building and they were hitting this truck as it was coming down the driveway. That was trimming of branches. Right. So. I thought they. I thought. Well, they, they cut the trees down at the at the base cut of the, the tree. Down, trees down. So I think that was her thought of a violation right. as well, if I recall. And then it was never done in a timely fashion. I think, you know, it went on and on and on, and, and I think that was her frustration, and I think that's what she's thinking. Well, it's in DEP's hands now. I haven't heard from him. But, what you know. usually happens in this process, does DEP does DEP reach out to you next and just do there sort of a phone no interview, or what? What's what are so next? So over at 44, um, 44 Roma Lane. Roma, yeah. They sent me an email, and then it was followed up by a letter. Okay. But I knew that they had accepted this, you know, because they they don't have to accept everyone. Right. So they they said, you know, right. contact the DEP, whatever. I think I turn around and send that right to you guys. So we'll be notified, the applicant will be notified, and um, the plaintiff will be notified. Now this will be more like zero border? Zero border road, what about, what's the similarities? Wasn't that one appealed? No. Arcadia. 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 Arcadia was appealed. Yeah. That was appealed by the by Butters, Butters ten versus concerned citizens. Yeah. Right. right. Um, now, when when an, a Butter appeals, do they have a right to be at the DEP walk on the property or any of that? Yeah. It's private property. Can I ask a couple? But, but, I'm not but, sure but, about but commercial. But 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 at Arcadia. The hill. No one went up the hill, yeah, but the, we were we were down yeah. at the because John Halsey was there, and we were at the uh, base of the. We were right at the road, and 
They were off property. Right, they were off property, and they but DEP discussed it there too. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So. Yeah, you can remember. My recollection was they discussed it there in a way that you know they I don't know they just overemphasized what they were going to look at when they were up top. And basically, when we got to the top of the hill, and the guy just shrugged his shoulder and says, "Okay, we're done," and we walked back down. You know, none of that checking or all those questions didn't happen. I, I mean, he probably just went up there and, and knew right off that there's nothing, there's nothing here. So, but it 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 sounded funny listening to him at the bottom of the hill when we got off the top of the hill when it was just the applicant and the conservation commission. He was like. He still made him put a trench train across the driveway. He didn't even think it was necessary. He still made it a condition, though. Yeah. Which was ridiculous. Yeah. My recollection was like I thought between the two projects, they both happened at the same time. Like he he did the opposite of what I thought he was going to do in both. Of them. But there's there's certainly this probably at least ten driveways on Arcadia that have a higher pitch that have no trench drain across the driveway. Right. And he made him put a trench drain across that property at the sidewalk. I don't know. I, I don't know what to tell you. Minutes? So, no. I have two questions. Sure. Um, one is, I'll do the easy one first. Um, could I get, um, could I get, I'd let, I'm interested in attending the fall MACC conference, which is October 19th. Is it, is it possible for the town to send me to the fall? I sent you an email about it four days ago. I haven't heard back, so I'm asking here. Yeah. I think the way that's happened in the past is that um, we'll reimburse you. But I pay it. And I'll, I'll try. I, I think it's okay. I think we have. I didn't go in the spring. But there were some interesting the things. What's, what is but it? I usually what did do. you want to say? No. <laughs> so, what did you okay. want to say? Is that one also at Holy Cross? No, no, this one's at um, Devon's. Devon's Common Center. What's anyway. The, what's the uh, workshop you going to? Um, no, there were some. Geology what something. Was that? It just flew into me. Fly. Oh, thank you. That spitball from me. <laughs> Is that what it was? This doesn't have it. And there were a couple. I'll look at it. Anyway, um, another thing is I'm going to miss the next meeting. I've been to two parents' nights already, but this third one conflicts with, oh, and it's the high school. i got to go, so, um, so I'm going to miss the 25th. We'll be here. And then I have a third thing, so, so I'm not here on the 25th. Uh, the third thing, I just wanted to find out if there was any update about Millette. Chuck, there was some. There's no update. No update? Okay. Uh, on Millette. Okay. I think that there's a... Oh, let me just say that there's a... Um, the trail committee on the 21st is looking for volunteers. It's the most exciting time of a trail committee's, you know, existence, where they're actually spanning the Abijona oh. with those micro lamps. Oh, this so is So if you want to be a part of that, oh. uh, they usually get there between 9:30 and 10 at the Millet property. Um, there's Bring two coffee and donuts. There's always coffee. No, I'm not even kidding. There's always coffee and donuts, and they and they usually go out and get more something, and there's drinks too in case it's hot. So they're going to make a temporary bridge across it. Um, and then they're going to bring the micro lambs across and set them and see how far we can get with the actual bridge. And um, it's happened.
happens on the 21st of September, which is a Saturday. It is. So if anyone wants to show up so, even for a few hours. Is it 9.30? Between 9.30, it'll probably, probably die out around 2, you know. It's pretty tiring. I think each one of those micro lamps are 500 pounds. I told Will he could, you know, bring them out himself so we could actually get some work done on Saturday when I get there. But they were 500 pounds, so I don't think they're going anywhere. Not that I'm going to take 250 of that 500, but you need everybody, really. Okay. And, um... So, the town is doing a survey, and you can go and check it out on the town website, it's and you can scan one. this in, and they're asking uh, business owners what, what they think about the downtown. So, it says, uh, this is a QR meeting. code with your phone, camera, to take the survey. So they get that, and this survey's on, uh, online too. Planning, the planning department online. Okay. Becky, anything else? Not that I can think of. Um, minutes of approval for 829, we can do the next meeting. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Meeting adjourned. Oh my gosh. This was so bad. You know, I didn't this think this was, like, was bad. So I was bad. Sometimes it's like when you think it is.